This is an RMK and Network production brought to you by 10 United Podcast. Welcome to One Queen, Two Kings. I'm your co-host, the Queen, Marjorie Phoenix, and along with my other co-host, the King, Kevin McLemore. Hey, hey. And Ray Porch, who unfortunately is not here with us, uh, but we want to welcome you to another episode, and we are honored to welcome the special guest tonight, Nahim Garcia. Nahim, thank you so much for taking thank time you. out of your busy schedule to wrap with yeah. us tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for having me. Thank you. Yes, I, will, I always love. I always love supporting and participating in anything that is black and about and for us. Yes, sir. Yes, or sir. anything that's about anything good. Yes, <laughs> it doesn't necessarily have to be black. That's right. That's right. We know sometimes the black hat is the black hat. <laughs> that, that sounds like it needs to be on a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, no, and, and, and listen, and, and and remember me when you put when you put the t-shirt together. You, you got it. You got it. Give me a couple of sweatshirts out of the deal at least. All right. <laughs> well, listen, I you know, Naheem's face might be familiar to a lot of you guys, and we'll get into some of that with his background and where you may have seen him from. But I, you know, I'm curious as I was reading your bio, you are a native of Boston. Right. Yeah. Yep. And um, and you're currently living there, correct? I live in Boston. I live in Brockton. So I'm originally from Cuba. I came here in 1968 with my mother, my grandmother, and my aunt. <sighs> so I came here, uh, and my grandmother and my aunt were both Boston public school teachers. Um, my grandmother retired from Boston public school and moved to Miami. My aunt retired from Boston public school and went to Miami and became an assistant principal. And my mother is a minister, an apostle, with about four master degrees in uh, theology and three doctorates in theology. All right, powerful woman there. Them, them three Cuban women um, brought this little boy to America, and they did they, they, they well, doing better than me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God you came to America, and they've been trying to ship all this talent back. They try, and, and, and I thought, you know, with, when they lifted the embargo, I said, well, here come all the good mechanics. Here come all the great doctors. Here come, you know, all the great arts. Uh, yeah, singers, was, dancers. Everything. It's on its way. And yeah. the Olympics was going to look very different. Mm. Yeah. The Olympics would look, the American team would look very different. Yes. The Cuban community was allowed to really you know, come here and engage. I mean, Cuba has their own team, but due to theirs, the, what, you know, their, the communism, um, yeah. most of the time they're not allowed to be a part of these great things but right right my mother was in my mother was in the cuban olympic team as a gymnast oh wow and then, and then she broke her leg twice and uh then she danced for the international folklore dance company of cuba so they got to travel all over cuba okay uh, so that's where they, my grandmother sang at the copacabana in cuba she was a poet and then and a, and a hairdresser she did hair Listen, and, uh, like, listen, it's multi-talented. So this is yeah. this is where the talent came from. So yeah, my, my you grandfather know. was a tapper. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> was it was in your heart. blood. It was in your blood to be a performer of some kind. And so, you know, some of you may have recognized a Naheem from, you know, films like The Equalizer and The Purge 3, one of my favorite movies. Um, you know, you might have recognized his face there, but you don't spend a lot of time in Hollywood, in LA, in California, you make your base in Boston. Why is that? Um, one, my children are here. Uh, my family's here. Uh, this is my roots. And the community in Boston um, is growing. Film is growing here in Boston. And it was important for me to be here because everybody always leaves. Mm -hmm. And then what happens when they come here looking for talent and there's plenty of black folks, but no real talent. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I did along with a bunch of others is stay here, coach, teach, help. I, I may not be the greatest talent, but hopefully somebody I touch will be. And, you know, they don't have to go to New York. You know, a lot of times they're bringing these talents in from L.A. and New York and then giving the locals like myself smaller parts. But my thing is to keep the community growing keep investing in your own community. I live here, invest here. We have every, now that the sunset laws are gone, governor gave it, governor, governor Charlie Baker, thank you very much, gave it the green light 
they're coming here to film. They have sound stages in the Marina Bay. So I'm working on a film that I'll be doing this week about a very famous singer. And you know, you always sign these disclosures. You gotta be careful what you say. I'm sure you've heard about it. I know you heard the song. And uh, and they uh, have a sound stage in that Marina Bay and bass, and they're doing a the sound stage there. I mean, they got exterior shots they're doing all over the place, but there's sound stage there. Danvers, there's, there's a sound stage. So it's coming. And, you know, they got shows like Kevin could go F himself. And they wanted, they're invested here. They filmed out here in Brockton where I live. And they want to build infrastructure and they want to build, but they needed to know that in four years they would have to wrap it up because they got to go somewhere else where they could get a tax break. That is gone. That is now here. So now we have schools, you know, we have BU, we have Emerson, and everybody gets their stuff, gets to New York and LA. But we need to make that happen here. They need, so as they're coming here, we need to make sure that they don't only have the population, but they have the talent. They have the talent that people are, are gifted, that they're coming in there and they're performing and saying, we don't need to call LA. We got them right here in Boston. Uh, and admit, if it's not this batch of town uh, 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 right now, there'll be another group of young people and people in general that are coming that will have the talent. But the main thing is to make sure that the community, artistic community grows here, that there is opportunity for them to work and that the work that comes here sees them and sees their talent. Yes. And you're cultivating yeah. some of that talent as well, because I know that you're you're working with the Huntington Theater. Um, you're working with um, high school students as well. You've done some work with the Boston Police Department. Tell us about that and in your work with the youth. So let's start with the Huntington. I've been a teaching artist. I'm a, I'm a teaching artist and a freelancer, but I have worked as a teaching artist for the Huntington Theater Company for over 25 years. I've been with the education department. Even when I was working as an administrator or a dean, I always had a part-time gig going in. You know, I would run off to go teach. And I taught with the education department. Now I've been under two uh, um, directors of education. The first one was Donna Glick. And now it's Meg O'Brien. And I have been involved. Uh, one of the schools that we work with, Codman Academy, uh, public charter school, uh, we were their theater teachers. So they do expeditional learning. What that means is that the students get to actually experience. They get to go to the theater and have theater class or the theater comes to them, but it's a constant exchange. Um, so that's with Codman. And then through the Huntington, there are two programs, Poetry Out Loud and August Wilson Monologue Competition. They're both national high school competitions. The Education Department, the Huntington facilitates it. They, uh, and, um, and we handle it all over the state. So through them, there's a residency at... Boston Public Schools. So I've had the opportunity, not just Boston, but I've had the opportunity to go all over the state working with young people, coaching young people, or doing pre-show presentations for the schools that are coming to see plays at the school. So that's one of the one of the things that I've done with them. Um, it's 11 years that I had the opportunity of being a, a teaching artist and a national coach for the August Wilson Monologue Competition. Um, and that's doing monologues from August Wilson's plays. Uh, Kenny Leon's True Color Company uh, out of Atlanta are the national, they control the whole national competition. And this was invented by Kenny and, um, and Todd, who were very close to August Wilson. Kenny's one of August Wilson's uh, director, and Todd was his dramaturgy and one of his best friends. And they wanted to make sure that there was an opportunity for young people to know about August Wilson and to know about his work and to keep it in the schools. So one of the things they did is they created this competition called the August Wilson Monologue Competition. And through that, I got a chance to teach. I also work independently uh, with several different programs. The, um, the Tennis Development uh, Corporation, the TDC out of South End, the bilingual program, I worked with young people doing some theater there. And just recently, I've been working with the acting up with the 5-0, uh, with uh, the Boston Police Department. Um, and oh, that Curly sounds Jewish. interesting. Wait, yeah, what's Curly that about? Desir. Well, uh, what it is is that uh, Officer Curly and Desir, Desir, I always say it wrong with Jules, is um, she has put together a program working with young people, uh, teaching them theater. And she has invited me, and we just talked yesterday, so it looks like I'm going back in the fall to do some monologue work and maybe scene work with them. But the whole chance is to use theater as a vehicle to help them understand and express themselves, to help them really 
cultivate their talent and and find their voice. And I have a hand in that. Uh, so that's, yeah, so that's what I've done with the Hunter Theater Company and August Wilson, the uh, Boston Police Department. But my main thing is um, education. I like acting. I like doing it, but I like teaching it and I like coaching it. Not because I'm such a great talent, it's because it helped me when I was a young man in high school and, and you know, cutting class and going in the back hallway with the fellas and all that. There was one class. Well, it was actually two classes I would always attend no matter what. One was theater, one was choir. And theater actually helped me through theater. I learned to read better. I learned to read, period. I learned to read better. And, and I realized that theater can help young people, uh, people in general, find their voice. Young people have a problem with their voice. They're loud and boisterous when they're not supposed to be. But when you put them in a structured situation, like presenting, they, 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 they cave. They, uh, they whisper and they can't. Yeah. And, so, and then you say, wait a minute. A minute ago in the lunchroom, you were loud as heck. A minute ago in the class, when you told to be quiet, you was loud as heck. Now you have an opportunity to say something, you know, because there's no training. So we teach them techniques. We train them. So, the, you know, so through the Huntington Theater Company, I've been able to touch a lot of young people through the Boston Public Schools, charter schools, and schools throughout the state, um, all the way down to Bonsonville, all the way up to Springfield. Um, and then independently, I just teach. I coach. I work for Boston Casting. I'm a teacher. I'm one of their teachers. So if you ever want to take a class at Boston Casting with Naheem Garcia doing acting from the gut or Spanish one-on-one -on -one acting, or one-on-one -on -one acting in Spanish with uh, Naheem, uh, that's available. And if you just want me and you want to get personally coached, um, that could be arranged as well. Awesome. All right. And there was one thing also, one more thing you asked me, you know, short term memory, honey, you know, the gray's real. Uh, <laughs> well, the gray's real. Usually most people would know me because I'm bald. I'm always bald. But right yes. now, yes. the film I'm working on, they told me I need to let it go. OK, I, I, I don't know why I'm going to be wearing a hat. That's about all I'm going to say on that. So I, you know, I said, I hope I at least get a lineup. <laughs> so I can at least, you know. <laughs> now, I, I have a couple of questions. One. You know, you were talking about young talent, and we had this conversation early on. For those of our, our, our listeners that are he just hearing us and not watching us, there's a beautiful piece of artwork be behind you. I know you kept bringing up August Wilson. And um, um, what, what famous artist did that work? It's got to be someone's making millions of dollars. No, Talk it is a high school student at a McKinley Tech. No, you're, not. you're lying. You're acting. Come no, on. These are high school students. These are high school students at the McKinley uh, Academy. McKinley Academy now it's called, but um, you know it is a school that dealt with some behavior that deals with behavior and, and manage and teaching students how to manage their behavior. And, and and you know you walk in, you think these students, you know these kids are loud, they're crazy, you know they go whatever, they have their little issues. But what it is is that they are talented and. The beautiful part about my teaching partner over at the McKinley, Warren Penzler, who's retired. 2020 was his last year. And it was a hard year, but he retired, has, has been wonderful. And he has been bringing kids to the Huntington to see plays. And we have a residency doing August Wilson monologue. And then I'm, there, I'm walking in there and I realize that, wait a minute, they're not just, these kids, they're, they're artists. And I'm walking through the bin, I say, all this all this artwork, yeah, these students did it. And they wow. did this. That is these beautiful. Students. These are high school students. So this yeah, is a collective um, collaboration between several students. They painted this together. Yeah, I think it was one or two. Okay, okay. Yeah, but they're, they're incredibly talented and um, they've done very well through August Wilson. Uh, they've been able to find their voice and perform. I'm very, very pleased, and I'm going to miss Warren in the classroom, but I hope I get to go back and work with them. I, myself, was a challenge student. You know, I was uh, in the 766, you know, until I found out that it wasn't that I was dumb. I just needed to be taught differently. I was visual. I needed to see it. I needed to see it in my head in order for me to perform it or to do it or to write it out. And, and even reading, you know, dyslexia, that's real. So theater allowed me to role play and put myself in a different mindset to be able to do the work. And that's being, that's a visual training. That's 
teaching young people to see themselves visually. If you don't see it one way, you got to see it another and give them skills to be able to do so. So I, 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 I'm not just, uh, what, what did the guy say? I'm not just uh, the president. I'm a member. You know, I come from, you know, I come from, a, you know, I come from that place where you were in a, in a basement room. And who would have known that one day I would have been a dean of students? You know, I would have taught theater for almost 30 years of my life. I come from a family of teachers. I never wanted to be a teacher. I right. see my grandmother and my aunt and mother doing lesson plans and going, dear God, I don't know parts of that. I wasn't a very good classroom student, but I was a good student because I'm a hands-on. Um, and once I figured that out, I figured this, there needs to be, I, I need to go into the system and help young people who may have had the same challenges and, and, and contribute to their well-being and their growth. And um, that's why I use theater as the vehicle to educate young people. That's why I have my own business called NG Edutainment, which is uh, uh, an education, uh, an arts education program um, using art to help students understand life. And, and that's the reason why and you hit on a very valid point. There's a difference between education and education. And understanding that you, you, you teach one student at a time. You don't teach students in order to chase an answer on a test. You teach students in order to think independently and to be creative. And um, you should be commended, commended by that. Now, Thank the you. second question I want to ask you, because um, I don't know if Ray told you or Marjorie told you, you know, I, I, I won't say I dabbled in, in, in the arts. I had an opportunity. There was a young man by the name of Peter Marks when I was in Cleveland, I was a trainer. And he was in theater, I went to go see him. And he kept saying, you had a voice, you should do this. If you ever come to New York, he says, got something for you. Two days later, um, I was in New York. I had relocated from Cleveland to New York. I was sitting in front of a casting director for Guiding Light, Jimmy Bohr. And believe it or not, without any acting experience, I had no idea what the hell I was doing. Um, I got a, a reoccurring role on a soap opera called The Guiding Light. And then Jimmy yes. Bohr I might have saw was, you. <laughs> yeah. So as quiet as it's kept, my, I like a little soap opera every now and then. As quiet as it's kept. So let me ask you this, because no one does this one thing alone. How did you get your first big break in this business? Well, it was a it was a combination. Uh, a few things happened. A friend of mine, uh, Robin Scott Manor, um, was working on Blown Away, doing some background work. And for some reason, she got me involved and she gave me an opportunity. You know, they said they're looking for background. So I'll go down there. And my call was at four in the morning. Uh, a longtime good friend and playwright, Thomas Grimes, who has passed away, um, calls me at three o'clock. Don't you got to be somewhere? I said, what do you do? Yeah. Well, how did you know? And boom, I do blown away. I got Jeff Bridges. I got Forrest Whitaker. And, you know, they're standing there. They're, I'm doing background work. 25 years later, I do a movie called R.I.P. Uh, R.I.P.D. with Ryan Reynolds and Jeff Bridges. And it was my second time working with both. So I got, I went into doing background work and then Boston casting, Mara Tai, I had a Mara Tai casting, who's now a teacher at Boston Arts Academy. Um, I got my first big break in a commercial through them, a Subway commercial, and then a Dunkin' Donut commercial. And then I started getting, you know, speaking parts. And then I started getting speaking parts in movies. And then I went from, you know, I get this movie. Yeah, you're going to do this part in this movie. You're, you know, they want, they're looking for a six foot four, 250 pound bald white man. Here comes Nahi, who is not. 250 pounds, who is not white, but is black and is definitely not six foot four. And I get the part and I walk in without realizing that it is a Morgan Freeman production and I'm acting across Christopher Walken. There's a whole wow. big scene with me and Christopher Walken. I'm like, you know, the king of New York. And then it just kept going on and on and on and on. And I haven't stopped. And I'm very grateful. And I hope to do a lot more. I mean, it's been the one liners, short parts. But I get seen for the rest of my life and for the rest of everybody's life, as long as these movies exist, I'm in. You'll see me. Um, so, yeah, I got a chance to do a lot. And, you know, and recently it's been very, you know, I did my fourth movie with Ryan Reynolds. Uh, 
this this one's called the Chili Project. It will come out next year as a Christmas movie. Um, I I did a, a television show with AMC called Kevin Could Go F Himself. Um, you know, and I just been doing stuff, and, and it's not always you know people people think I'm big time. You know, I got the work. And the big time, I'm not at the Denzel level. You cry from Denzel, you must be a millionaire. No, I got paid my rate. I did my couple of days. I went on about my business. And I'm going to say this to all actors. The key is not just to get the day. The key is hopefully to nail a part that gives you time on set. Because you can go in there and make your little $1,000 for the day. But what happens when you got six weeks, seven weeks, or seven months? That's where you start to make a living. And also yep. doing multiple things. I had a national commercial running around for Eloquist. Um, you know, uh, Dunkin' Donuts went bananas. Subways went bananas. And it got me popularity. And, you know, so when these casting directors come here casting, uh, Angela Perry from Boston Cast said, you know, these casting directors, they don't like nobody, but they like you. <laughs> I said, well, don't give me a bigger part. And more time on set. That's how you make your money. And that's how you, you know, but you joined the union. You know, I joined the union. They chased me for almost from 82. They chased me to about 96 and made me join. And, and, and I joined because they allowed me to do a couple of projects that were SAG films, but they give you, you know, they give you a pass. You got one, you got two. By the time I got to the third one, I said, no, 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 you got to join. You gotta I, join I, I, I'm in that position right now. You want to join? Oh, yeah, I'm in a must join right now. I, I actually, the last movie I did was with a friend of yours. Um, is called Invincible with Mark Wahlberg, and, I, and I'll share a story with you. Mark, uh, yeah. <laughs> how you know we friends? <laughs> I, I've, I've seen you in Daddy's home. Yes, and yeah. not only that, I, 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 I was back when his brothers and them were coming up. We were very, very good friends. They're from so Boston, Donnie right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, Donnie, yeah. Donnie, Donnie. I was good friends with Donnie, and 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 um, as a matter of fact, I spoke to him recently when they performed on the phone. And Donnie and uh, Jordan Knight, they were good friends. And Mark was young, but he remembered me from the breakdance days because I said, Mark, do you remember me? He, he used to call me awkward. He said, yeah, King Awkward Peace. I know, yeah, you need Donnie. <laughs> Gave me some pounds. But, you know, he's also Mark Wahlberg. So, bam, bam, bam. He's out. You know, everybody thinks, you can always call Denzel. You can I said, no, it's a professional thing. You go, I'm not their fan. I'm their colleague. I go in, I do the job. They And if, they, and if we get an opportunity where... I work with Ryan Reynolds four times. I can't pick up the phone and give him a call, right. you know. But if I get a chance to work on set, he remembers me. Hey, Naheem Black, you know, yes. and it's nice. But yes. I'm not there being a fan, like, oh, you know, but I yes. am their colleague. We work together. Yeah. Well, let me tell you a little bit about Mark Warburg, Wahlberg while we were on Invincible. I had one day that I didn't have a babysitter. I had to bring my oldest son to set, um, Alex, my oldest son. And Mark Wahlberg came back with all the people that were day players and so forth. And he came back, he goes, hey, who's that? And I said, it's my, my youngest son. He says, so that's little Mac. I said, yeah. He said, come with me. My son spent the whole day with Mark, the producer, sat in the chair while they were filming. Dad was out there acting. I, literally, I had tears in my eyes because I, that was a moment. Mark Wahlberg is, one, is some great dude. So if you get a chance to, to say that, uh, you know, to see him again, tell him I said thank you because that meant a lot to my son. <laughs> well, you see, but, that, but that's what I'm saying. That's the kind of stuff they do. Like in the last couple of movies, all these actors, especially when we filmed Free Guy this, a couple of summers ago, the, the director, um, producer, uh, Ryan, um, uh, Ray, um, my goodness, um, um, L, 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 oh, I, I'm forgetting that brother's name. Everybody remember Ray, the brother that we're co starred with him. Um, oh, my goodness, forgive me, brother. <laughs> Um, no, uh, Lil Rel, um, yeah. he was in the movie. He played co-star with Ryan Reynolds and he, he had his kids there. Everybody had their kids, the kids on oh. the set, they're watching. And, but that was very, very kind of, of Mark. And not only that, he, he, he gave your son an experience that he will never, ever, ever forget. He brought them in. They do that. You sit there and you see, and you're watching the screens and you're yeah. watching the actors. And his son, your son, just sat there watching. You know, you want some water? Somebody, you know, and lunch and lunch and dinner is always good. Yep. yep. <laughs> Breakfast, That's... lunch, and dinner is always good on set. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. So services. <laughs> 
So is, are you. there any projects right now, um, anything that you think about that you would want to, to be a, a part of or, you know, someone that you want to work with? Um, you know, I'm currently the working with a, a movie that was that about a famous a female singer who used to be married to a famous Boston singer. Uh, you can put it together from there. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'm so not talking about it. I'm not disclosing any information. No. Um, and, uh, and, and, and I, I would have loved... You, I, huh? I yeah, I got a chance. You, I thought you are going to be... You're going to say you wanted to be in the Fast and Furious next movie. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I'm do I. That one. I want to be in everything. I I, I want to be in every movie that I get a chance to audition for and and, okay. and a chance to be in it. I, I I don't, you know, the only thing that I I'm working on for the future is I'm, I rewrote a play that I started doing with the Huntington Theater Company with students called Know the Law. I rewrote it, set in 2020. I call it Thick, and uh, it's just basically about choices and young people making decisions that aren't safe. And young people that have the potential to be great, staying on, staying focused. Um, you know, it talks about knowing the law, joint venture. You know, it's dealing with pregnancy, it's dealing with gang violence, it's dealing with language. You know, uh, we do uh, we dealt with the pronouns. So there's a lot. You know, so the teacher is the teacher. It doesn't need to be for me and Melanie. You know, the police officer. You know, there's specific characters and specific gender reasons for reasons. But other than that. We made it very general um, and it's during the pandemic. So now we have all this stuff going on. These kids over here robbing and carrying on. So while these pand this pandemic is going on, there's um, young people out here robbing each other and, and not wanting to wear their mask or mm -hmm. not being safe with each other. And, you know, violating, you know, you got kids on with a ankle bracelet violating their, their 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 situation by walking through a certain part of the neighborhood to say hi to their friends and but also showing the police officers are not bad you know police officer could have ran this person and said you're going to jail but it said they gave him a shot said i'm gonna walk you home you know mm -hmm. to reflect that because i i you know i'm a member of, of the prince hall i'm a prince hall mason and there's a lot of police officers so was my father <laughs> Good. I may know your father, <laughs> uh, you know, and um, and so through that work, I um, I know a lot of police officers, and yeah, some of them are tough, but some of them really take the time to help me. You know, the the the, the chief of for the transit police department is in my lot, Kenny Green. He's a wonderful person, and I know he would have as much as 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 strict and hardcore he'd be. I know he would have gave a young person a break. As a matter of fact. He sponsored uh, the play when we were doing it, when we did it as Know the Law with the uh, Children's Services of Roxbury. Again, this was a Huntington Theater collaboration and development. So now I took Thick, I worked with the young people at the TDC to help develop the language. And then I did more readings of it with the act, with the acting up with the 5 with those young people. And hopefully one day I let get some money and we can do this play or do it as a film. Yeah. Film would be nice. Uh, film would be nice, and um, you know, but that takes a lot of money. Theater would be nice, and theater is nice because it gives a young person that on stage experience. Yeah, you know, yeah. film is fun, but theater is it because yeah. theater is for one. You're developing your memory. You got to you're forced to remember and be consistent, and you're forced to experience nuances on stage, which is a when you get a when you get a scene on stage and you and the actor vibing. I mean, you know, it's 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 it pop the champagne and, and light up my cigarette kind of a feeling. You know, it's a real it's a real high. Yeah, you know? yeah. And and to hear that audience responding and getting it, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. So yeah. yeah, so that's important. It's more that's immersive because you don't have these takes. Take one, take two. You you're in that moment and you're feeling it back and forth. Yeah. Right now, if you're like me, you tend to have a little memory issue. It's nice to go, cut. I'm sorry, what was the line? The line was, and you said, oh, thank you, yeah. Uh, and cut. Naheem just said, you said, you said. Well, put it in your mouth later, right? But on stage, you have a blank moment. Yeah. That's when you got to count. And that's when you got to invest into your technique and what you have learned and how, you know, different things to help trigger lines. You know, there's blocking. And certain movements on stage are specific to help trigger that line. Those are different techniques that you use in memorization. 
Because okay. memorization is not just repetition, but sometimes you just forget. So you need a little something. So like for Shakespeare, I learned that in Shakespeare. You know, certain movement, if you repeat it a certain way, just, you know, even if you forget, you do this, all of a sudden it clicks and the line comes. Um, oh. You know, little trigger, yeah, little things like that help. You know, the blocking helps, little techniques. And it also, uh, you know, it's good to have other actors that have a uh, good memory that might study your lines <laughs> and dance, you know. And, and weren't you going to say, and that's it? Yeah. Yes, that's right. That's it. And then, you know, you know, it's having some fun with acting. But it's also putting your shoe, putting yourself in another, putting your shoes in another person's, putting your yeah. feet in another person's shoes. Yes, and, and, yeah. and, you know, did he walk this way? How did he walk? Did he walk with a yes. limp? Did yeah. his left eye blink a lot, you know? Did, yeah. Was, was his face, you know, did he always walk around? Did he always uh, squint it when he talks to you? What was his voice like, you know? Mm -hmm. And it gives you opportunity to put yourself in another person. And now take it from being on stage and really having a situation and putting yourself in other people's shoes to try to understand what's happening so you don't react exactly. so soon, you know? And it's a process, you know, because of my teaching and my acting techniques, I've been able to say, you know what? Let's think about why that person did X, Y, and Z before you react and say something that's out of order. You know, put yourself in their position. Think about it. You know, it, it allows you to be a little considerate for somebody else's feelings and somebody else's situation. Create some uh, um, empathy, empathy and sympathy. Empathy and most sympathy. Yeah. Most now, definitely. Yeah. Let, let, let me have some fun with this for, for a minute because. Let's um, go. All right. Because uh, you're a teacher, right? I've done it a couple of times. All right, all right. Well, <laughs> let, let me let me see because I, I know how hard it is to remember a line, but I, I want you to coach Marjorie, bring her into a scene. Um, you know that you guys are just you know set up. You're sitting on a park bench right now. It's the first time you've looked at her. You know you, you know she's a, a top performer on a podcast. She has her own business, and you basically right now are working at the local grocery store. You know. You, you've got remnants of what your check used to look like and you look over at her and she smiles at you and you go, shoot, you know, you hear the rustles and everything. Go ahead, coach her up. What, what would you say to her? And go ahead and react. You trying say, to set I, a scene? I, I, yeah, I trying to set a scene. scene. I thought you were trying to set up a date. I was like, all right. All right. <laughs> no. Coach her, no. Coach, coach her up right now. What I would say, what I would say, what I would say. Do this, do, do this improv. Yeah, what I would say is, first of all, when you, you know, um, Keep it very simple. Keep it natural. Um, mm -hmm. React. Mm -hmm. Just react. But before you react, listen. As long as you're listening, you react naturally. Everything else we do is gonna be fine. So let's give it yeah, a shot. Okay. Ready? Okay. So okay, I'm looking at you right. for the first time and see. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? I'm good. How you doing? Yeah, yeah. I've seen you in a show before, the pod show. I think it's a what, one queen and two kings. Yes, that's right. You recognize yeah. me. You come into my store a couple of times. I've seen you, and it was, um, yeah, I noticed you. What are you doing sitting here in the park? Uh, just chilling, watching the birds. Taking a little break. Is it lunchtime? Or what are you recording the show today? No, not today. So I'm just taking a little me time and sitting out and enjoying the weather. A little break. Any kids? Yes, I have kids. I have two kids. Wow. wow. That means you got a husband, too. Huh? <laughs> I have a husband. Oh, all right. I got a kid too. How old are your kids? 29 and 16. Well, it's a little too late to have a plate day. So uh, <laughs> how about lunch at my store? <laughs> sure, hey, very good. Tell, me. tell me what time and when. <laughs> so you did some good, so you did just did your first improv and you responded because you listened. Yes, yes. You didn't, in the, you didn't, in you the didn't, dialogue. You didn't anticipate that I was going to say something and, you know, uh, <laughs> Because some people don't know how to process and think. They're like, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. No, you don't panic. Just listen and just respond right. naturally. Well, I didn't, I didn't take on a character. And I was telling Kevin right before you came on that I'm going to actually be in my first play the end of this month. I have a monologue of Sojourner Truth. And it's a three- Oh, to who are you doing it with? I'm doing it with a, a group called Ladies of Liberty. It's a very small yes. local theater. And they just asked me to do this part. And so I'm just reciting this three, four minute monologue telling her story and then doing part of her speech, Ain't I a Woman? So, so I'm going to give you a gift. I'm going to give you a gift. I'm going to give you a, 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 a one hour co free coaching with your monologue. You get your monologue. We go on Zoom. Let me hear it. And I'll give you some coaching. That is my gift to you. Oh, man. Thank wow. you. 
Oh, well, okay. let, let, let me tell you, ladies. Valued, valued, valued at $250 an hour, but you get it free. All right. Well, I'm going to say it. You heard it first here on One Queen, Two Kings, that we have a strong call to action. When we turn around and we put people together, we bring people together. Yes. So if anyone out there is listening that ever wanted to invest in a play or a movie, you call Ms., uh, uh, Mr. Nahi. Uh, yes. Garcia. I, excuse yeah. me for not being able to pronounce your name right, but I'm just a country boy and I'm just sitting here. And well, Garcia is like Smith, Smith, but Garcia in Spanish is Smith in English. You know, it's just one common not, name. Not, not, not to a boy from Kentucky. Garcia oh, well. language. Down there, in Kentucky. <laughs> it's a whole different language, a whole different way of thinking. That's but down in Kentucky, you got, you got, you got, you got, yeah, well, yeah, you might have a point. <laughs> you might have a point. I thought about it. I said, you know, you got the Mex no, Mexicans may have not gone that far. No, right. uh-uh. <laughs> That's right. But I'm sure, but I'm sure there's a Spanish community down there because Spanish I, I'm folks, gonna tell you over here in Kentucky, the only time we ever seen a Garcia, he was running through town. Oh, okay. <laughs> running through, <laughs> running through. He was passing <laughs> through. Up. I'm going west. <laughs> I ain't going west, I'm going to Texas, man. <laughs> That's it. Mr. Na Naheem. Uh, Mr. Garcia, now you know talent. You, you're around a bunch of young people, and I know every time someone comes around you, they're, they're looking for their big break. But I know you, you've sat back and looked at someone that has rehearsed a line and said or delivered a line, and you go, That's the next one. Do you have a student in mind that right now you can just put on Front Street right now and say, He's going to be the next big thing comes out of um, Boston? You There's have one? Few. There's a few. Wow. There's a few students that have that kind of talent. Um, and there are a few students who have gone on to be uh, on their way to be that talent. Uh, one of them that come to mind is Trinidad, Trinidad Rancun, who is now went from being my student, my mentee to a colleague, to somebody when I'm teaching. There's only a specific couple of people who I will call if I, can, if I can't cover one of my classes. And Trinidad is one of them. Uh, he's known, he's done the training, he's done the work, but he's incredibly talented. And when we did that August Wilson, like when I would go to, to New York to see the Nationals, and you sit there, you see that first student when they first open the Mungo, yep, there it is. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I have a few students here, but I have a few students here that I think uh, it's, it, you know, there's a, Jada was one of them. She got to get to the Nationals and she's very serious about being an actress and going up. Jada's gonna make it. And hopefully, uh, you know, she's she's serious about being an actress. It's her career. Her mother is supportive. You know, her mother is, is not just supportive. She's pushing and making sure that she has the infrastructure to move forward, to follow her dream. And a lot of it is not just having the talent, but having the infrastructure, the support. I agree. Right. You know, who's going to take you to see that coach? Who's going to get you to class and pick you up from class? Who's going to make sure that you make that audition, uh, you know, in the middle of the day? Who's going to make sure if you have an opportunity, New York's going to drive you out there. You got to have that group of people that are going to make it happen. That group of people say, oh, you got to come to New York. Don't worry about it, girl. You get on the train, we pick her up. She stayed with us and we'll get her to the, you know, or whatever yes, that deal is. Yes, um, yes. That's that's the village. Mm. And, you know, I grew up I grew up with Boston Youth Theater. I, I'm a member of New African Company. I had Linda Patton Spruill and Jim Spruill, who were my coaches. I work with the Jackie Parkers. I work with, you know, I work with all of the people in the, in the community. You know, my brother, by Kim, my brother, Waleen, they, you know, they, these are the people you know, that come in and do the work and help. And, you know, uh, Narissa Scott Will, uh, Williams, I mean, Narissa Williams Scott, um, who produces films and, and, and works out of Emerson. You know, you got to have a community. You, you got to be able to pick up the phone and say, I got a kid he needs. And somebody should be able to say, I can help. You know, <clears throat> my bread and butter is what I do right now. But yeah. a lot of times I give my bread and butter away because a lot of times some people can't afford it or those opportunities that weren't granted for me, I make sure that I provide it for somebody else. And I believe in God and I believe that it comes back. And I've been blessed in many ways. And, you know, I do better than most and worse than others, you know. <laughs> um, and, I, you know, it's like moments like this. You know, the fact that you took the time to say, can you please be on our show? It was an honor. Yes, oh, I will wow. be on your show. And not only will I be on your show, you're providing me a platform to have a voice to talk about what I do. So maybe this is a stepping stone towards making me 
yeah. get to the next level. But if I don't make it, like Martin Luther King, I may not be, I may not get there with you. But I want to make sure that I have helped somebody get there. And then when they get there, there's, it, let it be known that my hand got a chance to touch them and help them. You know, that they was able to give them them 10 fingers and move on up. Because yeah. it's not about me. The only thing that's about me is a paycheck. <laughs> you know, you know, other than that, it's about the work and making sure that the work, because the work is healing. Mm-hmm. I was going to say that it's very healing. It's, yeah. It healed yeah. me. It, yes. it, it, not completely, but it, you know, when I was yeah. in high school and I was troubled, it was nice to go to theater class and role play and it allowed me to start understanding instead of being mad at your parent, let's play your parent and let's find yeah. out why your parents said X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Now, it, didn't cure all, it didn't cure all my problems, but it sure made me think about how I felt and where I was. And, yeah. yeah. It's a self discovery like process, you know, when you do yeah. that kind of work. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Kevin, I hope that one day we find ourselves on set laughing about we, this moment get we, ready to do some work together we, we, you know we, that's what it's all about we we are trust me after marjorie does her thing i'm actually going to send you a copy of my book to, and sign it and give it to you because you're a gift to the world you know my oh, grandfather yeah. my grandfather has always said when you get to a point that you can help someone else you 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 do so as your duty he said for each one teach one yep and, and read that uh, book gonna, that's that book gonna help me yeah, I'm going to share the, the, the life lessons that, that I've learned. If it had not been for that book, I, I'm going to tell you, my, my sister, my queen, um, Marjorie, would not be in my life, nor would my brother from another mother, Raymond, would be in my life. So that, that book has brought me a lot. So I, I'm going to share, share that with you because for the simple fact, you're giving um, a young man, a young woman, an opportunity to have, a, have another choice in life other than the, the choice of the system that was given to them. And... And the fact that you're, you're doing this at home and in taking kids that normally would turn right when they need to turn left and they, they find light and hope by helping other people every day, you're a gift. Mm-hmm. And um, God's going to reward you um, for all the goodness you have done. And this is just a stepping stone. Trust me, some, someone's going to look at this and someone's going to say, you know something, I always want to invest in a movie or a play. How do I get in touch with this, these people? And they're going to call RMK productions or go to our website and look us up or try to google you and try to find you um but it's going to happen you know we've from got your a mouth to god's system. ear amen yes 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 <laughs> we've got a strong from your mouth to god's ear yeah, yes. yeah. your happen. most important work naheem is it's not in in the movies that you've done it's in that work that you're doing just like kevin said right in your own backyard and that's just and that's why we wanted to have you on because that is a part of, of our mission as well. We are going to create a community through stories like yours, guests like yourself, you know, and just sharing all of these different perspectives and, and different ways that people can be informed and be educated and entertained at the same time. This is what this platform is about. So having you here tonight has been a real treat for us. Thank you for joining thank us, you. and we want to thank, thank our audience for and joining us. And my mother's gonna us. be mad because my mother, my mother wanted the link, and I kind of forgot about that because we started talking. So if my mother could, and my aunt could ever have the opportunity to see this show, um, they will. I, I, they so will. We'll make mother, sure you get Dr. recorded. Dr. Garcia, and to my aunt Eliana, I love you both, and these wonderful people allow your baby to to have a platform to speak his truth. And thank you both, and continue. And my brother Ray. He's my brother from another mother too. Right. Uh, him, and, him and his wife Tracy and their daughter. Mm. They, you know they've been they 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 were part of my life. Their family. So now you all are my family too. Yes, so sir. if you need yes. me, you reach out. Your brother will respond. Awesome. And, and we Thank will and we will do the same. No matter where it is, and I will tell you. If you ever come to Philadelphia or outside of Philadelphia, don't check into a hotel. Um, there's a key under the mat. You know what? We go to no. We got we we visit Philadelphia in March. My fraternity. We go out to visit uh, our sister. Fraternity. Our so when I go, they saying at the hotel. I said, no, I'm all right. I'm gonna be. What, what, what fraternity? I am a I'm a, a part of Wilson Lodge Number Twenty Eight, which is a part of the most worshipful Prince Hall Grand Lodge a jurisdiction right. in Massachusetts. Right. And Light of Elmwood is one of the lodges that we visit out there in Philly. I, I was going to say, I was hoping you would say a Sigma. So it's like, oh, I'll show you. No, I got, no, my brother Waleem's a Sigma. 
Oh no, he's a captain. Only another one's a sigma. Look it up, and then then I'll tell you exactly where the key's at. But the key is <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. Oh, we I know how to keep secrets too. All right, all right. All right. Well, I, I I just want to thank you. Thank you for the honor and the privilege, you know, of talking to someone not only as on, on your on your level. I'm proud to, to say that you got a, a direct connection with with your faith because God's guiding you. Um, I'm blessed that Raymond. Um, connected us together and blessed that Marjorie was able to, to bring this together for us. And uh, I, I just wanted to thank you. And I, and I hope that there's a young person that watches this and says, you know, th there's another opportunity. Let me reach out and let me start taking a class. All they got to do, reach out to Naheem Garcia, the number 14 at gmail.com or, or, or my website, uh, www.naheemgarcia.com or just ask y'all and yes. you can give them my number. And they need to talk to me. They need some. Listen, the door is always open for awesome. children. Awesome, right. awesome. We'll make sure and put the link in the in the show notes. I want to ask everyone. one question. Okay. Um, from listening to this, um, for someone listening to this, what is the, the one takeaway that you, you want people that's listening to this to take away from this interview? That you have a voice mm -hmm. and that you should be able to use it, listen to each other, respect each other, and respond correctly but more importantly connect with each other connect with each other with there's such a disconnect with people in these days you know we could walk by each other and not even say good morning you know the fact that we're so quick to negatively respond to each other or injure each other or hurt each other but be empathetic and sympathetic in some cases listen to each other connect to each other and and keep helping and not just your fellow man but the younger man and the youngest sister, you know, and, and not just black and white, but anybody that's good. And if somebody's troubled, I don't care what color they are, help them out. You might find some beautiful person that can help you and inspire you. So don't be blind to each other. Love don't it. be blind to each other. Wow. That's beautiful. All right, Thank Marjorie. You. Well, listen, we hope that you all enjoyed this interview. I know Kevin and I did. If nobody else did, I, yeah, the three did. of us right here did, okay? We was having a good time. We started <laughs> going before we realized, oh, we need to record this. Right? <laughs> Even my country, Kevin, enjoyed this. Right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we ask you all to share this interview with your friends and your followers, and we invite you to come back to listen to any of our other podcasts, like Talking with Kevin and Son, Storytime and Wine, BFF, Black 40 and Fabulous, and The One Thing. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook at RMK Productions and Network. Until next time, remember... Be the change you want to see in the world.